My name is Shelley Feintuck. I was born in Winnipeg. I won't tell you the year. My parents were Holocaust survivors, as was my uncle. And uh, we all uh, learned about the Holocaust, not through them telling us, but through the things that we did in our homes. Well, I have an incredible story from my uncle, who has unfortunately passed away. He was in Auschwitz-Birkenau. He was one of the children who was there. He was rounded up and he was uh, put in a lineup of people that first dug their graves, then were stood up so that they could all be shot and fall into their graves. My uncle fell, not because he was shot, but because he fainted. The following day, he started feeling cold and warm and wet and he crawled out of the hole and that's how he survived the Holocaust. My heart breaks because I lost so much family. My heart breaks because so many people around me lost family and friends. My heart breaks because it's a heartbreaking situation and we have to remember the horrors that we can actually do to others. So my heart breaks and will break until we remember what we need to do as human beings to walk the right path. I think that we all need to be aware of the fact that it was ordinary people that perpetrated the Holocaust. Yes, it was under Nazi rule, but it was ordinary people who killed ordinary people. And I think that we have to be aware of the fact that each one of us has inside us that ability, if you want to call it that, to go to the negative. We also have the compensating side, which is to go to the positive. Awareness that these two sides of us are probably in a constant battle a lot is very important. And we have to use this awareness to develop educational programs, to develop talks, to develop venues where this can take place, and to bring people together so that they can talk about it. I hope that people will remember to remember because unless we remember the past, we cannot go forward in a positive way in the future. So I want them to remember not just the, the program here, but to remember that they have a, a responsibility to themselves, to their families and to others to make sure that they walk in the right direction. This day is incredibly important because this day marked the end of one of the worst concentration camps in the existence of the world, Auschwitz. Auschwitz was liberated on January the 27th. It was liberated by the Russians. I think that we have to remember that. I think that we have to remember what people saw when they liberated the camp. I think that we have to remember what went on so that we don't repeat it. I was uh, quite surprised that there were so many people here uh, to take part in, in this event and I'm, I'm thrilled. I think that this is just wonderful because it shows that people are interested and from this interest hopefully we can develop educational programs. Sonia is one of the most remarkable musicians that I've ever met. As the first violinist with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, she not only demonstrates her talent, she demonstrates her heart when she plays the violin.
I don't think that we do a good enough job educating the public about the Holocaust. The Holocaust teaches us not only about what happened in Europe and what happened here and what happened there, but it teaches us that ordinary people are capable of doing horrific things and that leadership is capable of leading the ordinary person into doing a lot of horrible things. I think it's very important to introduce the Holocaust into the schools. I know that many schools do this, but I think that it should be mandated. And the reason that I say it should be mandated is because I think that we need to become more aware of the horrible activity that human beings, ordinary people, can do and the horrors that they can per perpetrate on other people. Well, I think that first of all, if we want to have youth come, we need to invite schools. If schools were not invited. Um, we do have programs that take place in, uh, in various, um, with various organizations, in various venues uh, where youth are invited. Uh, but I don't think that we can really judge um, the lack of youth here by anything other than there weren't uh, invitations sent out specifically to schools and I do believe that we need to do more work in that regard. More work in the schools, especially the high schools.